What does Dr. Flowers think about the American gospel documentary? It seems to me to just call people from other false doctrines into Calvinism. Bruce Lawn. Uh, what does Dr. Flowers think about the American gospel documentary? It seems to me uh, like a, to just call people from other false doctrines into Calvinism. And that was kind of my issue with the documentary as well was it was it was again, yeah. it was a, a very like Paul Washer present presentation of, of what's wrong with American church instead of making it more broad, or at least the solution was, well, Calvin, therefore Calvinism is right. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on the American gospel? Documentary? Yeah, I have a, I have a review out on, on my broadcast too, on that, that documentary as well. I, I've been wanting to do part two of that, but I haven't got to it. Um, yeah. But I, I do the same thing. I came to the same conclusion that it's, it's kind of this false dilemma set up. It's, it's either the Joel Osteen, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the health, wealth, prosperity movement over here, the bad guys, yep. or it's Calvinists. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's like, if you, if you hold up those two as my options, Calvinists look really, really good oh, <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. these guys are the health, wealth, prosperity guys, or you got the works based <laughs> salvation. You got the Catholics, the worst, but works based yep. salvation Catholics that they put yep. in the video. You got all this, just the, the worst of the worst on this side. And the other side is Calvinism. Um, and, and, and if you have those two options, then yeah, the Calvinists look like the best option, but the problem is, is that's not your only two options. It's not the, it's, a, it's what you call a false dichotomy or a yep. false dilemma that I have to choose either Joel Osteen or John Piper. Okay. No, you, you can actually choose someone else. You can choose a, a, somebody who doesn't adhere to theistic determinism and Calvinism who also rejects the, the health, wealth, prosperity movement um, and the um, the false teachings of, you know, uh, many of the people that they mention in that in that in that uh, particular documentary. A lot of the documentary I agree with and a lot of it, it, it was well stated. And, and if you weren't aware of Calvinism or aware of the doctrines that the men teach on this side of the, the aisle, then you might not even picked it up. But uh, but those of us who are aware of of Calvinism and aware of the doctrinal stances, you we could see it and it kind of yeah. read between the lines uh, throughout the documentary. But um, it was but like for the Paul, most part, was, I agree with a lot of what they said. Yeah, it was like Paul Washer's um, uh, shocking youth message. Like good assessment yeah. of some of the problems with American evangelicalism. I could do a hundred of those messages on a bunch of different topics. Uh, not the right antidote or the solution, in my opinion, which is be a fundamentalist five point Calvinist. That's the solution. You think that you think that's how we're going to thrive on this side of eternity. Does everybody just be like Paul Washer and tuck your shirt in and tell everybody they they hate God and they're utterly depraved. I don't know if that's really the, the solution. So I think, yeah, I think that's really good. Your channel is like an encyclopedia of all of these questions just answered in depth with slides and all that kind of stuff. So Go look at his channel. It's repeatedly just saying that his depiction is false or this is false, this is false. It's not an argument. It's an opinion. I'll address that. I mean, one of the biggest critiques I'll have from my Calvinist friends is that, well, he just doesn't represent Calvinist well, or he misrepresents us. Mm -hmm. um, it's an accusation of misrepresentation. You just don't understand Calvinism, or you could not have ever been a Calvinist. <laughs> it's impossible because you disagree yeah. with us, those kinds of things. And I have an article about that too, um, and, uh, and a broadcast about that as well. And that is because, remember, um, Calvinism is not a monolithic group. There are many different kinds of Calvinists. A lot of Calvinists disagree with John Piper on several yeah. points or MacArthur or other leading Calvinists. And so I may disagree with your, or I may be representing a form of Calvinism that you don't necessarily adhere to, but it doesn't mean I'm misrepresenting all forms of Calvinism. I've, I've spent my entire adult life studying uh, John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion, wrote my dissertation on the subject. If, if I misunderstood Calvinism, then I am the daftest of all men. And maybe that's the case. But the truth of the matter is, I know a lot more educated people uh, in academia who have come to the same conclusions that I do. Um, and, and they have studied John Calvin's own teachings. It's not because I've misunderstood Calvinism that I've rejected. It's because I came to understand what Calvinism actually is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Calvinists are really good at using very palatable ways to present a very difficult doctrine because Calvinists are the first to admit the doctrine of reprobation is a very tough pill to swallow. The doctrine and idea that God chose 
most of humanity to be damned to hell for reasons beyond their control is a very yeah. difficult pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Piper talks about weeping for three days when he first was introduced to these doctrines before he finally was willing to swallow that pill. Matt Chandler talks about it being an itchy blanket that eventually became a warm blanket that he embraced. Uh, one of the podcasters <laughs> talked about the, the stages of grief that one must go through when you first become a Calvinist, because there's a <sighs> grieving process that you have to go through. And yeah. um, I've heard a lot of different uh, uh, R.C. Sproul talks about being drugged, kicking and screaming by the scripture into his Calvinistic uh, beliefs. Um, wh why is it so hard to swallow Calvinism? Calvin himself called it a dreadful decree. Um, <laughs> it's dreadful. It's difficult. It's hard. Um, but is it biblical? And that's mm. that's the point. It, 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 no matter how you paint it, it's going to sound bad when you say it real plainly as to what you're saying. Because think about what your belief is. Your belief is that before people were even born, God destined, faded, if you will. Mm. I don't know. They don't like the word faded, but look it up. That's what it is. Mm. They destined them, faded them to be destroyed for reasons completely beyond their control. They have no control over their fate. They have no control over where they're going to spend eternity. Absolutely no say in the matter mm. whatsoever. And this is, this is, this is the claim of the system of theistic determinism and of Calvin. John Calvin taught this. And so, if I state it real plainly and I, I don't placate it or I don't make it sound with political speech all nice and, and, and comfy for you, um, it doesn't mean I'm misrepresenting Calvinism. I'm just stating it more plainly so people understand what it is so that they know to reject it. And so some, some arguments you don't have to argue against. You just have to make them very clear so people know to reject them intuitively because some doctrines are just intuitively seen to be false and wrong. And I, I think the doctrine of reprobation is one of those doctrines. It's just intuitively wrong. Uh, and unjust. And I think most people, when they see it and understand it, realize it, it's it's worthy to be questioned. It's worthy to be second guessed. And so I, I just, I, I would appeal to your audience to just say, um, go read the sources for yourself. Be good Bereans. Don't take my word for it. I mean, I, I would rather you go to the scriptures, but please listen to the best scholars from both sides. In my experience, again, just my experience, the new Calvinist today many of them are in kind of their theological Calvinist bubble and they only hear what their own scholars are telling them about the other side. And so they hear people like Matt Chandler say, well, those Arminians believe that God gets into a DeLorean and travels into the future to foresee who's going to believe. And those are the ones he elects. Literally said that in a, in a message. Um, and, and they paint uh, Arminians and non-Calvinist uh, all in this, this very caricatured way to make us seem like we're dumb, that we're goofy, that we don't have really any in-depth uh, exegetical commentary on the verses that they're always quoting from. And that could not be more false. I used to think that when I was a Calvinist, I used to think that Arminians just, you know, they meant well, they, they, they're good pragmatists. They, they're good at, you know, preaching and loving people and being pastoral, but they're just not very deep exegetically. They're just not really deep thinkers. And it wasn't until I started studying that I began to realize just the opposite is the case. Mm -hmm. The deepest, most robust thinkers throughout Christian church's history have not been Calvinist in my, mm -hmm. in my experience, in my, my studies. They've been non-Calvinist, yeah. but they've been buried over uh, the course of human history. Why? And again, this is going to step on some toes, but it's just a fact of the matter. Calvinists tend to be theological bullies. Throughout church history, the Calvinists are the ones who would burn the Anabaptists at the stake and throw them into the river and burn up all their books. And mm. so you look back throughout church theological history, you don't see a lot of the free willers because the free willers are pacifists. Mm. The free willers are, are like, like um, uh, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. It just, just totally went out of my brain. Um, but the, who, who would teach, uh, like one of the Anabaptists would teach, um, we should win people over with love and patience, not with fire and, fire and sword, because this is what Jesus did. Jesus was patient. Jesus was loving. Jesus was mm -hmm. kind. So we shouldn't kill our enemies. We shouldn't kill the dissenters, theological dissenters. Mm -hmm. um, and th these, th this is, why, why did he believe this? He said, we believe this because we should be patient with people because they, their wills might change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, we, we could convince them. And so we don't want to kill them before we have they give them full opportunity to repent. And so they, they would argue this from their free will theology. But guess what happened to them under Zwingli? Under Zwingli's, under Zwingli's rule, they would get killed. 
and their bur books would be burned up. And so, yeah, looking back through theological history, it looks like overwhelmingly just reformed and Calvinistic and all kinds of stuff. Why? Because Calvinists tended to be the theological bullies throughout the, the years, and they tend to bury uh, all the, the, the scholars from the other side, uh, literally, sometimes, unfortunately. Now, again, don't hear me say that I think people like Piper or others would, would do that today. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that that particular way of thinking often attracts with it very bullyish type of people that come a part of that, that systematic. And they're the ones oftentimes who lead the charge and, uh, and can become theological bullies in silencing their opponents. So this, what I like about this is, is just that distinction you mean, you made between how and what that there's to me, there seems a degree of acknowledgement to paradox, more of a degree in acknowledgement to paradox and more of a degree of saying, I don't necessarily need to know how to know what everyone and where the Calvinist position is trying to give you a how answer and it creates this certainty and this fundamentalism and having an answer for every single question and your theology fits in this nice little this this little puzzle and it all just beautifully fits together when I don't know anybody that would read the scriptures even read the scriptures in context understand the Hebrew and the Greek that would be like oh yeah like I get this very nice puzzle of theology that just all fits beautifully together. We're not saying that Calvinists are, are bad. We we're, we're, think Dr. Flowers' is heart is still brothers in Christ. However, this is where the error is uh, from his studies as a theologian. And I'm excited, guys. Check out his channel. Um, it's really good. It's pinned up here. It's pinned up in the title. Um, and and I'm sure, again, if you guys have questions that weren't answered, I'm sure he has a video on it because you crank those things Probably. out. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Kingstream Entertainment. R R R R Bruce Lawn. Joshua the King came down and bore it all. Yeah. Conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate. On a first name basis with the world.